Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I make videos all about making and selling candles. If you're interested in checking out what my Etsy shop looks like, or if you wanna see any of my merch designs, go ahead and check out the first links in the description box below. Today's video has been quite the struggle. I had tried to upload this video last night multiple times and I had a lot of audio issues. I purchased a new mic, but for some reason, I don't know if the mic itself is just defective, but it's not connecting with my camera properly. So the audio quality came out really, really bad. So I'm making it work for today. I'm actually recording the audio with my iPad in front of me and I'm just syncing the audio and the video together. So it's the best I can do to try to work with what I can right now. But today's video is really exciting and I honestly don't mind refilming it because I love talking about product photography. Product photography is so much fun. It's beautiful. It's so much fun to create different photos that really kind of highlight what your product looks like. And you can really show off and sell your product so much better when you have much better photos. So what I'm going to be sharing with you guys is how to basically improve your product photography. So whether or not you are taking photos on just like an iPhone, like I have been, over the past seven, eight months or so before I switched over to my camera, or if you are taking photos on like a DSLR camera, you can do both. So you can have higher quality, really nice quality photos on either device. And I will basically be sharing you guys just kind of what I've learned and what I know. The first tip that I have for you guys is lighting. Now lighting is really, really important when it comes to taking photos. Without good lighting, it can be really hard to get that good, crisp, clean image of your photo. Even if you're taking the picture with something like a nicer camera, if you don't have good lighting, it's still not gonna be a good photo. You can get way nicer photos just using your iPhone if you have good lighting. So what I recommend for you guys to do, go and get some photography lights. I get mine on Amazon. I actually need to get some new ones because mine are breaking. I've had them for about five years now, but I recommend to go get some photography lights or get a little light box kit from Amazon. Anything that's really going to add in that artificial natural light to your to your photos is gonna look so much better than that warm undertone that can happen when you don't have that lighting. Or if you guys live somewhere where it's really sunny outside and you can utilize the sun, definitely do so. That natural light is going to make your products really, really stand out really nicely in the photo. The best time to actually take your product photos is actually about an hour before sunset. This is going to give you the best lighting within your photos. And definitely do not take your photos in direct sunlight. It will not look very good. Take it in the shade at about an hour or two before sunset and you will get a really nice image and lighting quality to your photos. Tip number two is make sure that you guys are making your candle the main focus in that first picture on Etsy or on your website or whatever it is. That first picture should really showcase your candle. It should not be at a far off place um, in the back of the photo or let's say a prop is a little bit closer and it almost seems like maybe the plant or so is being sold. You wanna make sure that that candle is what is being sold and that it's obvious to the customer right when they're looking at it. Remember that we as consumers, we purchase with our eyes first before we read anything. So make sure that your main photo is of your candle and that it's obvious that you are selling a candle. In your other photos, you're more than welcome to do more lifestyle type of photos or add more props in um, or make it not as in the center of the photo if you would like to, but that main photo really does need to be front and center just your candle. Tip number three is make sure that you don't have clashing backgrounds and colors. And what I mean by that is if your candle is a certain color or it already has a lot of colors to it, make sure that you aren't doing some crazy pattern backgrounds or crazy colored backgrounds. It can just kind of clash too much with the actual candle itself. And remember, we are trying to sell the candle. So we wanna make it as easy on the eyes for our customers as possible to know what's being sold. 
And sometimes if we have too many different clashing backgrounds, it can really throw off the look of the photo and make somebody not want to purchase it because it's either an eyesore or they just glaze right past it because the candle kind of just blends in with the background. So make sure that you are choosing a at least a solid color background. I personally prefer a white background, but you're more than welcome to do a darker color background or a gray background. Just make sure it's solid and make sure that it works for the colors that you have with your candle. Tip number four is make sure that you guys are editing your photos. Make sure that after all the time you spent with your photo shoot, that you are taking the time to edit your photos and really bring out the saturation or try to bring out the contrast or whatever it is in your photos that you want to edit and make them look even better than what they actually are. That is something that I highly recommend everybody to do. I can definitely tell a difference from a photo that is edited and a photo that is not edited and trust me this took some time to get used to and some time to learn with the editing process and just a tip for you guys there's two apps that I use to edit all of my photos with the first one is Snapseed I really love this one I've been using it for a really long time and one of my favorite things to do with that app is actually pick certain points of my image to really brighten up that area so I use this to make my background as pure white as possible for some of my photos and I also like to use it to pinpoint certain areas to brighten up the label as well. And then for Lightroom, I really, really love the aspect of choosing the Lightroom presets. So they do have manual options that I play around with as well, but the presets are awesome because you're able to make all of your photos that you just took look exactly the same as all of the other ones. So you have the same edit on all of them and it's a quick and easy process to kind of upgrade your photos. So just know that editing doesn't have to be hard. You can do it right onto your phone. There's so many different editing apps that you can play around with, but in my opinion, editing is the best part of the photography process. Tip number five is make sure you guys are not overexposing your photos when you do edit them. Now, what I mean by overexposed is that there's too much brightness on the photo, either on certain areas of the photo or just all overall on the entire photo. If you guys are trying to brighten it up, but it's more disappearing certain parts of the photo, that's what I mean about overexposed. I see this a lot with labels. Um, a lot of times when I'm looking at a label, it will be so bright and overexposed that I can't read exactly what the label says. So just make sure that when you guys are editing and playing around with editing, that you don't overexpose your image by, by trying to brighten it up too much. Make sure that you guys really take some time to play around with different apps to see what the best brightening feature is that won't overexpose your image. Tip number six is sometimes simple is better. And what I mean by that is sometimes we try so hard to add in so many different props, so many different angles, so many different styles, so many different things that we are throwing into the photo. And sometimes it's so much better just to take a simple photo. I have seen so many really nice professional looking photos of candles where it's just the candle or just a candle with a plant next to it and it looks hands down so much better than trying to throw in so many different props in there so when you are going through your photo shoot definitely play around with it and play around with different props that you have but always remember that sometimes if you dial it back a little bit that can really bring out your candle and make your photo actually look even better Tip number seven is make sure that you guys are taking enough variety of photos. So when you guys are doing your photo shoot, make sure that you aren't just focused on one angle of the candle. And as soon as you get that photo, then you're done. Make sure that you are spending some time while you have all of your supplies out, your lighting and everything that you have out to try to play around with the angles of the candle. Just move things around, lay it on its side, have the lid resting on the side of the candle, light the candle, uh, take a photo of you lighting the candle, just try to do different styles of the photo. And that is something that I've honestly struggled with in the past. Not necessarily taking the photo has been a struggle, but remembering that I should have a variety of photos. I just wasn't thinking about it. I was always just focused on what the main photo was and I wasn't thinking about having a variety. And honestly, for the longest time on my Etsy shop, I have only had one photo on there of my candle. And it was just the main image. As soon as I got that main photo, 
wrote down, I was done, and I didn't have to worry about it anymore. But it really is beneficial to everybody involved, especially with the customer, that they can actually see more photos of the candle. The more photos, the better. I'm trying to have at least three to four photos of my candles now on my Etsy shop. That's definitely something I'm working on. But just make sure that you guys are taking a variety of photos of your candle. Tip number eight is make sure you are trying to take some lifestyle photos if you can. Lifestyle photos are really awesome for selling your candles and for your feed on Instagram. I think that lifestyle photos are fantastic. And more than anything, I wish that I could take really nice lifestyle photos. But to be completely honest with you guys, I don't have cute things. I don't have a cute apartment. I don't have a cute bedroom. I don't have a cute little bed spread and bed set and curtains and really nice lighting that comes in. I have none of that. I have always been somebody who has never really been into home decor. I've more of been somebody who is just kind of what am, what's going to work for right now, especially in this little apartment that we're at. I mean, nothing is cute. I just basically have my business stuff everywhere. So that's kind of what I'm working with. But if you guys are able to take some lifestyle photos, some photos of your candle on a coffee table or a nightstand or something where it's just kind of in a lifestyle type setting. I highly recommend that you guys do that. I feel like they look really nice and they can really help to sell your candles. And the last tip that I have for you guys is to play around with the composition in your product photography. So composition in photography is basically just how the elements and the props in your photos are arranged in that photo. So when I am taking photos of my products, I'm not just placing things in one spot, taking a photo and that's it. I am getting at different levels. I'm getting on the ground, I'm getting on the side, I'm arranging the, the props constantly throughout the photo and and different angles and really trying to see what works. I take probably hundreds of photos when I do product photography shoots just because you never know what angle is going to look the best. So don't think that you are just going to place certain things in that photo shoot and it's going to turn out really well in that one specific way that you're placing it. Try to play around with it and really take some time to learn and try to play around with the composition. It can look so much better when you are changing things up and you'll see things that might look better than what you were doing before so definitely play around with that anyways guys that is today's video on my tips for product photography I really really hope you guys enjoyed today's video and again I'm so sorry about my issues with audio quality in the past I'm really hoping I can just fix that completely um, and figure out what's going on with the mic that I got but anyways if you guys enjoyed today's video go ahead and give this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Ding dong. Ding dong. Knew it. It's my Amazon delivery.